Hey guys, this is Courtney. Before we jump into today's forecast, I wanted to let you know I am offering a tarot reading that is only available to 12 people. So the first 12 people who want that, um, you can purchase it on my website. This is something that someone approached me about and so I wanted to make it an offering in case there were other people who wanted it, but not probably something I will do all the time. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out in the link down below and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. All right, so this particular new moon is taking place, like I said, in Leo, and it's sitting right next to Venus and Black Moon Lilith. And we already know that Venus has been going through a larger retrograde cycle where she is establishing her new values. You can see this as RX, she's retrograde there. Um, so she's just already kind of thinking about what do I want to do differently? What do I want to prioritize differently? Especially when it comes to Leo topics like creativity, self-expression, relationships, children, things that are extensions of us that are bringing us joy, that are reflections of our own heart. And wherever you have Leo in your chart will definitely show this as well. So that's one of the things that is really going to be drawn into this new moon because of that pre-existing story. We're all already going to get a new beginning that is going to help us further define our values and priorities. This particular new moon at 23 degrees is really about, well, that Sabian symbol is really about acting very courageously and showing our skills and taking risks on pursuing things um, that will not only enhance our skills, but it will also kind of put us in the limelight. It'll put us to a test in some kind of some kind of fashion. And that is what I feel like we are about to transition into. But because it's next to Black Moon Lilith, which I do really want to make a video on this point in astrology because I have seen it be very, very impactful along with Chiron in people's charts. Um, but Black Moon Lilith has a lot to do with where we hold shame around certain desires. Sometimes this can be sexual and Leo sometimes can have that expression. But Oftentimes, it's really just things that we want for ourselves that would make us more autonomous, that would shake things up and go against the status quo, that maybe isn't accepted or has taboo topics associated with it or kind of is frowned upon by the rest of the world or by people that we love. And as I've already been talking about, this Venus retrograde has a lot to do with shaking off other people's perspectives and really owning your own version of your life. Uh, I just saw two, two, two. So really feeling like you can shine in your own essence and your own desires. And so because this point is next to the new moon, I do think that we are going to have to kind of surpass our own fears and inhibitions and parts of ourselves that is afraid to want what we want or afraid to to go after what we want because of shame or expectations and everything of that nature. Um, it could come from many different places, kind of depending on your chart and your personal experience, but there's usually something where we are a little hesitant to take a risk or to move forward with something or to shout how amazing we are from the rooftops because of the way that we are fearing um, others' kind of wrath or you know, shadowy elements of life, like, oh, judgment or, um, you know, again, shame. That's a really, really common feeling with this point. So I feel like that's one example of this. So we're really in this period of time where we're meant to be pursuing our desires courageously, taking some kind of risk on ourselves, owning what it is that we really, really want, and reassessing our priorities to reflect those internal changes in our lives. That's a lot around what I see, especially because this is trining this North Node in Aries by three degrees. We are meant to be pursuing things that we want. North Node in Aries is selfish. North Node in Aries is focused on the self. And that's what I mean by selfish. They don't really consider everybody else's thoughts and feelings. They just move forward in the way that they need to because their heart is telling them this is the right way forward. Take a risk on this. Make this move in your life. And maybe other people will judge you or there's going to be comments or maybe you're going to have other people disagreeing. 
But this North Node in Aries doesn't care. This North Node in Aries wants you to grow and evolve as a more autonomous and independent, individualized person. And that's something that we see very strongly here. This is also highlighted because this new moon is making an exact square. Again, you see 23 degrees of Leo to Taurus, or sorry, Uranus and Taurus at 23 degrees. So any type of square with Uranus is indicating a need to break free, to change, to leave conventions, restrictions, traditions in the past, and to embody more of a sense of authentic expression and freedom in general. And that's something that we keep discussing. What is individualized, authentic to my own self? And what do I need to alter in my life or disrupt in my life? What do I need to change in the way that I've done things or thought about things or pursued things? Whose feathers do I have to ruffle or what will just inherently on its own become a little bit chaotic or surprising or changeable as a result of me pursuing what I really, really want and need? And so that's how I see this new moon. I really see it us stepping into our own power and making a claim of exactly how we want to move forward in our lives and what we want to pursue and that affecting other people in a way that might be initially uncomfortable for us. But as we do that more and more, we embody more of the North Node and we realize that we can be confident stepping into this new territory. We can be courageous and not let these fears hold us back, especially around what other people think. Um, something else that is a side note that is another transit happening is we have Mercury and Mars together in the sign of Virgo. So Mercury and Mars, especially in the sign of Virgo, is very detail-oriented. This is focused on structures and systems and refinement and self-control and our own inner authority. And I did pull this Emperor card. So I feel like there is something about this energy where we're trying to step into more precision and skill development and mastery over ourselves, over our environment, over a certain topic that we're interested in. But we're going through a phase of refining and perfecting something that we're interested in and pursuing. And as the sun moves into Virgo in a few weeks or in a few days, I don't know exactly when that's happening, um, at that point in time, will have um, a more em a greater embodiment of the Virgo energy that will help us have greater clarity and understanding of even how to master this a little bit more. So I see us again with the Six of Swords in a moment of transition where we're needing to make some important changes in our lives and shake things up, but it's also helping us making whatever these changes are, even if they're not totally related to what I'm about to say next, um, they are going to indirectly influence it or directly influence it for the better. So as you make these changes, you're going to notice with this Eight of Pentacles and then this Mercury and Mars that your skill development will increase. So maybe there are, maybe you need to own a certain desire of yours or make a certain change to your, the way that you're pursuing things in your life or your relationships or your money or whatever it is that this Venus is trying to reprioritize for you. Once you make that change, it's actually going to free up some capacity, some energy, or give you mental clarity. It's going to do something to aid in the development of a skill or refinement of something in your life of maybe self-control. Maybe it's your routine. Maybe it's your diet. Maybe it's something that you're trying to get better at work. There's something in this area of your life where that is going to benefit from these life changes. Um, and ultimately, it's trying to lead us towards a more balanced life with this justice card to really give us things that we deserve, that we feel like are fair, um, to really own, again, own our, our light and our essence and only want the same reflected back to us instead of less than, um, as well as not just pursuing skills for pursuing skills, but really to create a balance in our lives. How can we be more efficient so that we can work well and work hard, but also have time for play, time for rest, time for nourishment. And Virgo is very much concerned with the whole system. It doesn't really, it's detail oriented, but it won't look at just a part of the system. It won't just work hard. It also wants to feel like it's taking care of its health and everything else that's important. So this justice card is really trying to say not to drop the ball or hyper focus in any one particular area. This is really a point in time in which we're getting the broader perspective of things as well. 
And we can see that especially because this Mercury is making a trine to Jupiter and Uranus, which are planets that are involved in higher level thinking and awareness and understanding the purpose and the meaning behind things and integrating it into, again, a larger and larger system or perspective or viewpoint or belief um, that will drive its everyday decisions so it doesn't become too myopic or too um, small. So essentially that is what I'm seeing. I think that ultimately we are going to know how to move forward from our intuition. Um, part of the reason why we might not have total clarity on this all the time is because Mars is still opposite Neptune and it is actually going to be moving further into this opposition as this new moon ends. So even the days after the new moon, there may still be a little bit of confusion around how to refine our skills or how to become better or more masterful or more self-control. And this is really meant to have us move intuitively. Like again, how can we create this balance between the head and the heart? How can we feel like we are spiritually devoted to ourselves while also be devoted to the earthly realm. Um, and with Mars making almost an exact trying to Uranus, there are going to be some changes in our actions that will help us pursue some of those material realm things. Um, but again, with, with Neptune opposite Mars, there may be times and days where we're confused or we're lethargic about how to, especially confused about how to change our actions to better um, again, refine things that we want or go after the things that we want. So you might create systems right now and then you kind of go back and redo them or you might create a routine right now and it feels hard to stick to it. There could be a desire to adhere very strongly to something, but maybe not have the clarity or the energy or the capacity to fully dedicate to it. So that's just something to keep in mind that we're still kind of in this phase of transition and we don't need to like arrive or be settled there if things are not fully like landing and, and remaining and consistent. Don't beat yourself up because Mars opposite Neptune has that type of energy. And so if we can just kind of ride the waves and trust our intuition, feel out how we're feeling in the, in the moment and our energy, that is going to guide us the best during this period of time. So a couple of different messages there, but key here is to balance, pursue your desires regardless of how it affects others, make certain changes, especially to the way that you are going about the pursuit of your desires and the refinement of your life and self-control and your skills. And you'll notice that as time goes on, these things will become clearer and stronger in your own essence, in your own mind, and you will get more of the benefits of the actions that you're taking. So that is what I'm seeing for the overview. Let's go ahead and jump into each of the rising and sun signs. All right, up next we have Aries rising or up first. So this is an exciting one for you. I'm pulling really good cards. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. This Leo new moon is happening in your fifth house. And as I've been saying, it's really daring us to courageously go after something that we desire and not have any shame or um, be stopped by or limited by beliefs or fears or anything that's held us back in the past. And with Venus here especially, we have started to reprioritize what we value, and that is helping us get more in touch with what we really want. What's beautiful is that the North Node is in your sign in your first house, and this new moon makes a trine to that. So you guys are already in a period now, not the, now the nodes have shifted signs for the next year and a half, you guys are already in a period of really growing into your own essence, of really embodying more of who you are meant to be in this lifetime. You are the leaders this next year and a half. You are paving the way and you are showing people how to basically be more Aries, be more independent, brave, courageous, pioneering. Um, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that have strong Aries and Mars. Um, there's a certain factor where when you take, again, when you take risks with Aries, you kind of just dive right in and you're passionate and excited and fired up. And that helps you lead the way and make mistakes, kind of fall, but also get back up. This is really empowering and beautiful thing. So I feel like that's what's happening for you guys with something that you want to create or do more of in your life with this being in the fifth house. Um, but this really feels like there's something that you're wanting to do in regards to career. I did roll the dice and get the sun and the 10th house and Aries actually. So 
This to me is saying that you guys are doing something in your life right now that is likely going to pursue or sorry, advance your career or advance some kind of important life goal or big move in your life that you feel like I'm growing as a person, I'm expanding, I'm up leveling, I'm I'm pursuing something that I've always wanted or I'm seeing myself through a new lens and now I'm able to start dreaming up this next new path for me that feels more expansive. It just feels like you are um, coming into just more potential and higher growth and inspiration, especially with this Ace of Wands. You guys are in a period of feeling very, very inspired and creative. And this is making a square to Uranus in your second house. So ultimately it is going to create a little bit of disruption or need to change things that you have held on to, ways that you have made money, ways that you have maybe been a little bit more safety oriented or stagnant. Um, and it's having you maybe take a risk. Maybe you're going to buy something new, invest money in a certain way. That's usually more about spending. Investment's more about the eighth house. So maybe not so much investments. Um, but usually, usually there is some kind of way in which you are shaking up your financial matters, your possessions, or your self-worth and identity around what you value that is needing to shift so that you can start to pursue some of these ideas that really inspire you. So maybe you are going to make money in a different way and you have to start viewing money differently, for example. Um, but there's something that's a hitting a growth edge for you that I think is going to feel exciting and not scary. Um, this greater Uranus sometimes can be scary if we have to let go of security. That can feel scary. But the pursuit of whatever this is, I think, feels very expansive for you. It feels really yummy for you guys right now. Um, we also have Mercury and Mars and Virgo in your sixth house. So you're coming into a period of refinement within your career, within your health and your routine. So this area of your life needs your structure and special attention. And you may need to make some changes or invest some money or get out of kind of like stuck energy in this area by making some sort of adjustments in order to, for this to be refined in a way that really suits you. Um, Mars is opposite Neptune in the 12th house, so there still may be ways in which you are needing more time alone or you need, um, like things are drawing on your energy spiritually even. And in this case, it's, it's like you, it might be harder to stick with a structure that you try to implement in your life. So just kind of honor both of these needs that might be in opposition with each other in some way in your life. I also pulled the two of wands and the six of pentacles. So I really feel like you guys are making some kind of plan for your future, making a decision, especially around like money. Again, the six of pentacles has a lot to do with giving and receiving in the flow of money. Maybe you guys are deciding that, hey, I'm worth more. I'm going to charge more for this thing. Or um, I know I want to move in this direction. It's going to make me more money. Or if I do this, it's going to feel like it gives back to me or to others in a bigger way than already that I'm already doing. Um, so something that can maybe make you feel more abundant and generous. There's something around this where I think you guys are really lit up and inspired. And this is directly in line or applicable to your financial wealth or your self-worth. I also pulled this destiny card. So again, I feel like there's a lot here around like purpose, how you're moving and evolving. This has a lot to do with your the North Node and your sign. Like this is calling you towards a particular destiny where you are meant to, again, be stepping up this year. And I think that you have to make these changes in your financial realm or your self-worth realm in order to be able to transition into a new version of the self that has different challenges, you know, like up leveling your challenges and, and up leveling your potential as well. So that is what I'm saying for you, Aries. I hope that resonates. If it does, don't forget to comment down below. Um, I love to read your comments and see how it applies. If you enjoyed this, please share with your friends, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have Taurus rising. For you, this Leo new moon is happening in your fourth house. And it's funny because I also rolled these die 
um, these astrology die and I, and I ruled to the fourth house. So definitely feels like it's reconfirming that this is definitely related to home topics where you live, your family, your roots, your origin, your ancestry, your common emotional patterns and reactions, and all of those things are becoming highlighted. But because this is a Leo new moon, this is really encouraging you to, again, pursue something that you desire that others might not fully understand or might not fully agree with. So this might mean that you are moving somewhere and somebody doesn't necessarily agree with that life change. Maybe this is meaning that you are pursuing something, but it's kind of rubbing up with your family or there's something here where there's a little bit of friction in order to pursue what feels more aligned in the area of family and home and emotions for you and so and also security as well so sometimes the things that we need to to do and create are things that bring us security and sometimes that goes against preconceived notions one of the strong messages that i got for you and something that's very clear in the astrology is let me start off with the card first, which I got the Arnica teacher card. And it's really talking about learning and teaching and everything of that nature. But one thing it specifically says is to pursue a path that is different, um, not trying to conform in order to fit in. Let me just read what it says here. Draw upon the power of your tribe to discover the power of co-creative support. Holding your unique power within a community further empowers your vision and capacity like a wolf, be fiercely loyal to your tribe while also upholding your unique talent. When Arnica grows in the wild, it's found in unique and mystical patches, showing us its unique form of manifestation and growth. Like wolf, it does not follow established pathways. It's, it finds its own way off the beaten path, defying patterns of habit. So whatever you're meant to pursue right now is meant to be very unique and different. And this is true because of the square to Uranus in the first house. So for example, I know someone with a Taurus son who is interested in living abroad, but maybe also wants to rent their house out where I live and have a dual kind of citizenship or location. Um, so that might be something that you guys resonate with. Maybe you want to make some changes within the homes or some changes within your family. And the way that you want to pursue it or the way that you're meant to go about it is actually very unique. Um, and it might be, again, disruptive to the status quo. Other people might not understand it. And they're really not going to get it until they see you actually doing it and then they're going to be like oh yeah like I should have just done that all along or maybe some of the fears or hesitations comes from within you where you feel like okay this is how things are normally done and I have a different way of wanting to do them so how do I go about that and so that might be something that you have to overcome within yourself but ultimately this new moon is making a trine to the north node in Aries. So we're all meant to be pursuing things that make us feel independent, that make us feel like we're taking a risk on ourselves, that we're being brave and courageous in the pursuit of what we want as individuals and not listening to the outside perspectives as much. Um, you guys also have Mercury and Mars conjunct in Virgo in your fifth house. So this is where we're seeking better refinement and better skill development and self-control. So in the area of the fifth house, this is probably very useful because the fifth house tends to be quite focused on joy and pleasure and creation. And sometimes these areas develop very naturally and other times we can pursue things that kind of take us off of our ultimate goals and kind of away from our higher vision of success because we just want what we want when we want it in the moment and are no, not always having the discretion of when to do what. So Mercury and Mars here I think is actually really great because it's going to bring structure and boundaries that are really necessary to the creative process or to things that you really want to pursue or that you enjoy. This could come up in your relationships with other people, with yourself, with your children, um, with your own schedule it's kind of going to be different for everybody but there's a need to have some kind of like clear talk or communication set setting a boundary with yourself or with others defining things parameters knowing how things will and won't happen um, and again doing things in a way that is best for you that is independent that is not biased by other people's perspectives and I see that really with this queen of swords like she's really sitting in her own power she knows exactly what she wants and will set the proper boundaries in order to pursue that you guys are in a in a phase of transition with the six of swords with the square to Uranus ultimately you guys are meant to be 
in kind of like this rite of passage or movement from one phase of life into another. And that's what Uranus activated by this new moon in the first house does is it makes us feel like we're not quite in this other life, but we're also not in the old. And so we're in this bit unsettled of a place. So many of you guys are are there and many of you guys might even be traveling, for example, because um, the Six of Swords can mean things like that or it can mean the need to release certain baggage. Maybe there are certain fears or insecurities or any other physical baggage, mental baggage, relational baggage that you feel like is kind of weighing you down um, from being able to move through this transition because when we transition or when we travel, we don't want to have a ton of bags with us. We want things to be really clear. This is where the boundaries come in. Of like, this is a no, this is a yes. Limiting things, t taking on less things so that we know exactly kind of where we can direct our attention because the, the pure act of traveling or transitioning takes up energy. And so we can't have it also, that takes away from all these different avenues that we could be putting in the energy into this person or this activity. It's like we have to pare down so that we can more realistically um, have the capacity to do what we want to do. So I hope that makes sense. Um, another card that you guys got is the Ace of Swords, which is talking about breakthrough, new ideas, mental clarity, and success. So if you guys are feeling stuck in a period of rumination, if you're lacking clarity, I absolutely think you're going to get clarity right now, especially because Mercury is making some beautiful trines to Jupiter and Uranus and Mercury is with Mars. So not only are we getting the clarity, the higher vision, what we need to kind of shake us out of our feeling of being stuck, not only are we getting that clarity, but we're also taking action on how to move things forward, especially with Mars exactly, Mars in the fifth, exactly trining Uranus in the first. You guys are willing to take action on the things that light you up and you're willing to make changes to who you are, how you see yourself, where you see yourself going in order to have life feel more like it's joyful. Um, but you might, again, be a little bit confused or not have full conviction when it comes to the area of community or friends when you're taking these actions because Mars is opposite Neptune in the 11th. You might be confused about if I do this, how will it affect my friends or how will it affect my sense of belonging or how will this change my long-term goals? And you might be, again, not totally clear on where that is going to land you. And for this, I say this transit is going to last even after this new moon, that clarity might take a few more days to come when it comes specifically, when it's specifically related to community friends and future plans or belonging. Um, and so if that's the case for you, I encourage you with this King of Cups to really trust your intuition and your feelings and just recognize and know that like what is meant for you will remain. What is, you know, it, you can just trust your own feelings like you you have all the answers your intuition is right and you don't need to have clarity on all the logistics yet because that's sometimes not possible i also have mercury and capricorn in these dice that i rolled and so i think that you guys are in a phase of long-term planning while also looking at the details and really thinking things through a lot and I think it's super important that you guys get clear on what your boundaries are, where you want and where you're going. And then the element of like your friends and your community and the belonging and even very long-term goals. Those things will kind of clear up as the time comes and you don't need to put the pressure on yourself right now to have it all figured out. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. I hope that this helps. I hope that this resonates. If it did, please comment down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe and share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, check me out at willsboom.com and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right. And next we have Gemini rising and sun for you. This Leo new moon is happening in your third house. And I feel like it's a time in which you guys are going to be going through a little bit more of almost like a, a healing that's happening with your own mind. That's really something I'm seeing very clearly with the cards a lot. Um, and I think it's because the third house has a lot to do with our mindset, our everyday life, how we kind of check a bunch of things off our to-do list, not in the same structured everyday way as a routine, but more so like running around, talking to people, going through the stores, buying the stuff you need, running errands. That's more of a third house energy. It's quite busy. Um, and I feel like there's something about this 
uh, energy that's just like this busyness that kind of can seep into your mind as a Gemini and you can embody that busyness inside of you. You can embody, you know, overthinking too much stimulation, desire to learn more, to do more, da 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 always wanting to have some type of friction or interaction with the world around you to feel excitable and alive and I think that that's something that might be reprioritizing itself with this Leo new moon um, around this period of time. I will also say, though, that this is a time in which we're pursuing our desires regardless of what other people think or the way that we've done things before. So we're really removing our shackles of expectations. Um, So there's that. But I think this is more so you guys having your own way of doing things now that is different from how you used to do them in the past, especially when it comes to your internal world. This could also be having to have a conversation or to make a decision or reach some point of clarity. That means that you're leaving something behind. So there's some element of a realization, your mind clearing. There's something about that that is trying to pull you from the past and into the future with this trying to north node in Aries in your 11th house. What's next for you? Where can you find more connections, friendships, communities? And what do you need to leave behind in order to come into greater clarity about what you really value, what you really want to prioritize, be less busy with things that are not as significant, be less anxious, Um, commit to having certain important conversations or decisions if that's necessary so that you can make more space and more room for what is meant to help you advance in life and meant to go with you into your future. So there feels, again, like a very healing energy. And I think it's because it's this new moon is squaring Uranus in the 12th, which is saying you're finally getting free from some things in your life that may have felt like some kind of, like that had some kind of hold over you. So again, that it could have been something related to busyness or not being able to decide something or it almost, there's just something unsettled within you that I feel like is being released. And that is going to lead to this feeling of balance, this feeling of moderation, this feeling of patience, slowing things down, not needing to keep ingesting more and more and more, but feeling like you're coming into a place of healing, of tranquility, Um, especially with the star card, really kind of feeling hopeful and optimistic about what's to come because you're almost having more energy and more um, peace. I think that's really, it's not just energy, it's, it's definitely peace. And the star card is just so beautiful. I just love this one so much. This deck is just amazing. You can't even tell how beautiful it is in my camera. And I think it's also going to help you create things that are much more sturdy and invest in things in your life that have more substance to them. So this could be, again, people. You need to... All those things I've discussed before, like you maybe need to make a decision or clear up the clutter in your mind or in your life. There's something around this where you're kind of like really understanding what is superfluous, really understanding what thoughts, energies, actions are running you ragged and running you around town and not necessarily contributing to your life overall. And I think that you're understanding with this Knight of Pentacles how to invest in what really, really matters to you. And for some of you guys, this could be related to your home right now with this four and with Mercury and Mars in Virgo conjunct in the fourth house. I think you're really, really motivated right now by refining and creating more skills around the perfection of your home, the way that you feel emotionally, um, maybe the way that you create security and safety for yourself, your connections with your family members. There's something about this that is a huge priority for you right now and should have your devotion and attention. And I really see this with this Knight of Pentacles. You're thinking long term and you're understanding, again, how to move away from what doesn't feel like it's adding to your life and investing into the things that truly light you up, that truly give you that feeling of safety and satisfaction and that feel like a reflection of what makes you feel at home. And that does involve some change because with this 
Mars in the fourth trining Uranus in the 12th, there's something that we need to shake up. And I just saw 555. So this is definitely indicating that we need to shake up the way that we pursue something in our life. Um, the way that we take action, the way that we create systems, the way that we create routines, the way that we take care of ourselves, whatever that looks like, there's something that needs adjustments in order for your home to really flourish. And I think for a lot of you, there may be some baggage to let go of, um, some some things again from the past that we that you've maybe held on for a little too long so like maybe an old habit or um an old routine or something of that nature that's that doesn't really contribute to the substance and the security and the refinement that you're looking for within your home or your family life or your emotional life mars in the fourth is also opposite neptune in the tenth so i feel like even though you're focusing on the home right now with Neptune in the 10th house, there's still a lack of clarity around your career in some way and how like your home life and your dedication to this area and your family or your emotions can fit into where you're wanting to go next, where you're headed in your career or these bigger life goals. Those are not like I think that area of your life has again, like you're not totally clear on where you want to go. Um, there might be some questions and that's okay. Like you don't really need to know everything. It's just a time to trust your intuition. Neptune is really not trying to dissuade us. It's creating confusion so that we go into our hearts and ask what feels right for my next steps with career. And I really see that with the sun and, and Capricorn. You are in a phase of maybe needing to plan ahead, to think ahead, but to do so from an emotional perspective, like really, really sitting intuitively and feeling into each opportunity or option for you and deciding from that place rather than thinking about the money or thinking about the practicality it's because Capricorn is very practical and it wants the practicality to come in but it wants intuition first Capricorn is a sea goat so there is that element of the sea of the intuition of the divine and the mystical that leads Capricorn to its purpose and then the practical stuff comes after when it is implementing what the vision was so that's what i'm seeing for you guys you're really meant to be following that vision focusing on your home releasing something from the old um, focusing on substance and what really matters to you and what can carry forward with you in the future and i hope that this resonates if it does please comment down below give me a thumbs up subscribe share with your friends and if you want a reading from me check me out at willsboom.com and i hope you have a great day bye all right, up next we have Cancer Rising and Sun. For you guys, this Leo new moon is happening in your second house of finances and self-worth. And it's making a square to Uranus in your 11th house. So like I've been saying with this new moon, with Venus and Black Moon Lilith conjunct it, we're coming into a phase of reevaluating our priorities and making sure that we're pursuing something courageously regardless of other people's thoughts or expectations and even our own limitations, our own fears, our own doubts, especially around, you know, your own worthiness of something. And I really see that with this Eight of Swords and especially this new moon being in the second house of your own sense of worth. I feel like you guys have maybe had a lot of like self-imposed limitations where you felt like I can't do this. I can't have this. I'm not good enough. Um, maybe you got stuck in a victim mentality or just negative thoughts in general that really made you feel like you couldn't do something fully or led you astray in some way. Like it gave you some false narrative and you ran down that path. And I think ultimately with this um, Leo new moon squaring Uranus is trying to break you out of that and helping you see more potentials, more potentials of belonging, of community, of feeling like you've found your place or your vision for the future, of having some kind of larger purpose or integration into the world or, or society. There's something here where I feel like you guys are stepping out of this victim mentality and realizing that you are the leader of your own life with these king of wands. You are the one who can make decisions, who moves things forward, who when they act with confidence can pursue anything that they really desire. And with this new moon also making a trine to the north node in Aries in your 10th, this is really trying to pull you into leadership and growth within your 
big life goals or career objectives. So how can I reach for more? How can I feel like I'm worthy of more? How can I pursue this and undeniably feel like I have some sort of control over this? Like I, I'm a, maybe you're an entrepreneur, for example, maybe you actually go out and, and do something to make a name for yourself. It's like really kind of pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and not letting circumstances deter you or situations or other people's comments or old thoughts or old feelings deter you from feeling like I have a say in how my future goes and I want this and I'm going to go for this. I have this vision and I'm desiring to claim it. And the square with Uranus is saying, really own a vision that actually is in alignment with you and own a vision that expands you and grows you and pushes that growth edge and own a vision that you feel like before you weren't capable of but in reality you actually are so this is your time to really step up in many ways i do think with this um 10 of wands there may be some hard work needed to actually complete this vision maybe you feel like there's a huge path ahead or there are certain um, obstacles along the way or extra responsibilities maybe it would involve going back to school or working multiple jobs or trying to find a sitter and deal with your kids while you're also having other responsibilities but there's something in your life that you're wanting to pursue that you're allowing those things to become excuses and this is saying that you have the capacity to handle them that you have the wherewithal to be the leader and the visionary and juggle all these things to get to where you want to go. And there are times in life where we are compacted and stressed and have extra responsibility. And then times when we're expanding and we receive and we're in more of a flow state. And that's just how life is. And so you're going through one of those pa phases of life where you are going through extra work um, and coming into a phase of needing to complete that and this is going to help you achieve this level of growth that you're really wanting and maybe even achieve some level of financial security as well. So maybe you're working harder right now because you're wanting to make more money. Maybe you're working harder because you're trying to also uh, feel like maybe you're kind of grinding away, working really hard, but then at the same time, you're trying to redefine your own self-worth and your own value so that you can charge more or that you can um, get a job that makes more and it doesn't require as much labor. So there's something here around that where you're meant to not only put in the sweat equity, but recognize your worth so that you're not overextending yourself unnecessarily, but pursuing things and put, taking on responsibility that gets you to where you want to go in terms of higher growth and higher potential. You are really the weaver of your own reality with this card here. You have the p power to manifest what you want. You see it and you can create it. And this has a lot to do with money because I pulled both Taurus and Venus. So you really, again, need to, with, the, with these rolling dice, you really need to come back into, um, and a different understanding of what worth actually is and especially self-worth. Um, and I think with the, f with the fifth house also being activated, there's something, I mean, shown in these rolling dice, there's something here that is really calling you to do something that expands you again and feels very creative and exciting and doesn't just feel like it's a mundane job that you have to do because society tells you have to do it. This is really a time to pursue something that you want to pursue regardless of your old thoughts or other people's thoughts about it. You also have Mercury and Mars in Virgo in the third house. So this could be why you're working so hard right now. You might experience more anxiety with this, perfectionism with this, desire for cleanliness. But again, this hardworking energy is here as well. And trying to master the mind is very important here. Mars is making an exact trine to Uranus in the 11th. So it's really trying to help us make some changes to our friends or our community or our future goals in our path and align our current actions with that to get to where we're wanting to go. So maybe having the right connections, talking to the right people, networking, making friends, putting yourself out there, um, really kind of assessing what fits into your life, what makes sense for you and asking people questions, asking for help. That's an important part of this whole journey as well. With Mars opposite Neptune in the ninth, there may be certain beliefs 
um, or visions of your future that are not quite clear yet for you. So what do I believe about myself, about my life, where I'm going, what I want, where I'm headed? I don't know. Those things are not super clear in the long-term vision. And that's okay. If you don't feel like you have necessarily all of the purpose and the meaning behind everything, and it feels more so that this is exciting to me, so I'm going to pursue this right now, that's okay. Like more immediate things might feel tangible for you and might feel more possible for you. And over time, you will naturally be able to figure out the higher meaning behind that. And I pulled this higher consciousness card, which means that it's accessible to you, but directly through your intuition. So it's maybe not something that you can download and be like, okay, this is the higher meaning. This is the belief. This is where I'm going. This is my vision. Maybe it's something that you're like, I'm drawn to this and I'm following my emotions and intuition. And eventually that will become clear to you. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Cancer. I hope that this resonates. If so, please comment down below. I love to read your comments. If you're interested in a reading, check me out at willisboom.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and have a great day. Bye. All right, and next we have Leo rising. So this is a big one for you guys because this is a Leo new moon, which means that this is happening in your first house or maybe conjunct your sun. It's at 23 degrees of Leo. So if you have your sun in Leo within five degrees of that plus or minus, then this is going to be conjunct your sun and you will be affected on a much more personal level. So this is a big one in general being in the first house, but also because it's making this powerful square to Uranus, which is pretty much exact at the time of this new moon. So you guys are not only going through um, a period of further self-discovery and moving more towards your identity, but you're also making some really big shifts in your life and your life direction and possibly your career as well. This Leo New Moon has a lot to do with owning your own desires, what you really value, which you, we've been reprioritizing with Venus retrograding your sign. You guys have been going through a lot of changes, lots of questions, reassessments in your life this past month and actually all of August. Um, and that's going to continue. And this is a particular new moon that kind of points to the, to those questions and those changes. And it asks us to then pursue things regardless of other people's expectations or beliefs or how it will affect people or even past versions of ourselves. So as we create new priorities, sometimes we change as people and that rubs up against other people in our lives because they expect the same or they want us to be a certain way. And so this might be a chance for you guys to push back on that boundary and set your sights on something bigger, different, newer. And I really feel like you're going to be moving quickly into whatever thing that you plan on doing. You are moving towards it very, very fast. I pulled the Eight of Wands and the Knight of Swords. Both of these cards are very, very fast moving cards. So if there's anything that I could say for you guys is that this is not a slow new moon for you guys. There are going to be swift and sudden changes in your life and in your career and your life direction. It's going to come out of nowhere. Things are going to appear for you. Things are going to change and evolve you as a person. And with Venus on the new moon, I think it's going to really enhance your life in the future especially when it comes to your own sense of beauty, of wonder, of things that you really have interest in, that you really enjoy in your relationships and your finances. If there are changes that feel volatile, that's okay because they are getting you to a place where those things become much better and more authentic for you, at least in the long run, especially when Venus goes direct in September on September 3rd. You're coming into a period of shape-shifting. You're quite literally shifting who you are, your identity, and how you've known yourself to be. So this, again, is such a big one for you because you are changing your path and trajectory and who you think that you are as a person. And this has been a big deal for you guys for a little while now, like I've mentioned. And so this is almost like an emphasis of that energy, a reiteration of that energy, but stronger. And it's even more beautiful because of the trine to the north node, which is happening in Aries in your ninth house. So this north node is really trying to get us all to become more independent, self-reliant, to become brave and courageous in the pursuit of what we wish and what we desire. And in your ninth house, there's something about growing more as a person. There's something about maybe traveling to a new place, studying something new, learning something new, teaching something to others, um, pushing the growth edge and evolution and seeing your life 
in a bigger, higher perspective. And this new moon is going to help you do that. So maybe you'll study under somebody. Maybe you will try something new that you've never tried before and realize that there's new avenues that are opening up for you. But whatever it is, it's happening suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. It's moving quickly. It's moving swiftly. It, there's no time to second guess yourself. There's no time to, you know, think it over, mold over for a long time. We're moving fast, moving, moving fast. And I see this also because Mercury and Mars are together in Virgo. So there is an enhancement here of our ability to think and act very quickly. So we think about it and then we act on it. And there's almost like this immediate cycle because these plants are together and that's happening in your second house mercury and mars this conjunction so this is really thinking and acting in a way that is going to involve your finances that is going to involve your self-worth that's going to involve your resources or your home something uh, that you own or something that is in your possession so uh, maybe you buy something rather quickly and then you start to learn like let's say you buy an instrument for example then you start to learn that instrument and you learn it really really fast and then in a month you have like your own little concert of you playing that instrument this is just an example but there's something about that area of our life where you're acting really fast when it comes to finances like i don't want to think about it i'm going to move i'm going to i'm you know you're thinking about it but you're immediately moving into action like i said um and i think this is really great with this mars also trining uranus in the 10th the changes that you're making here can progress your life forward so your concern with money is great and the things that you're purchasing, the things that you are investing your energy or time into that have the potential to grow you money long term. This is all a yes from the universe saying like, good job, you're doing great. Like, let's keep up the good work. Um, however, Mars is also opposite Neptune in the eighth. So there is some energy here around not being totally sure of your investments Um or there could there's it's interesting because I feel like maybe you guys are also feeling insecure about money at the same time like I see you guys moving quickly towards it but it also feels like that might be an area of mental anguish or weakness for you right now with this devil and the five of pentacles you might feel like you don't actually have enough money or the more that you start pursuing things and making these changes you start to realize maybe it would be better if I had more or made more um Maybe I'll never make more with this devil card. We can start to feel really trapped in some kind of cycle of life that we're in or trapped in old habits. So maybe you feel like, oh, we'll always spend money or I'll never make above this income threshold or money will always be hard for me or whatever the stories are around that. There's something that could really kind of get under your skin with this Neptune opposite Mars. And ultimately, it's it can kind of weaken your confidence, but it's trying to help you trust your intuition more. It's not trying to undercut you or undermine you in any way so just remember that you can trust your instinct that you know but not to make um decisions thinking that it's going to get you out of that feeling of lack you know like oh a get rich quick scheme or i'm gonna do this to make a bunch of money super fast that doesn't really like because you're uncomfortable you feel trapped that's actually not the way out the way out is through um taking calculated risks working hard doing things that think that help you uh, work towards long-term success because i'm seeing a lot of energy around like moving very quickly it almost feels like driven by anxiety or driven by impulsiveness so that's something that you just need to be careful of that you're being very grounded and you're making decisions um even if you feel lack but you're making decisions from hopefully a, a better state of stillness or abundance or neutrality so that you're not making impulsive decisions that actually lead to more loss or something of that nature. You have a good, strong instinct that you can trust and that can guide you um, and intuition especially, but sometimes intuition and fear can get mingled. So you're going to have to be really aware of what is what during this period of time. So that's kind of a lot of messages in one, but I feel like you guys um, are definitely having this brand new leaf start over for you. And I'm excited to see where you shape shift next. Um, I did have a lot of I did pull uh, or roll some dice and I got the moon and cancer. So you guys are very much concerned with your home life or your emotions right now. Um, this could have to do with women as well in your life. And so that is that is going to likely come up for you in some kind of capacity, as well as the ninth house, which we already discussed, is very much about what you see in the future for yourself. So there could be something in regards to the home that needs a stronger vision for the future or in your relationship with women or your own emotions, it's almost like you need more hope 
in your life. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the key messages here is actually the need for you to have hope because things can continue to improve when you believe they will. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Leo. If you enjoy this, please don't forget to comment down below. If it resonates, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends and subscribe. <laughs> and don't forget, if you want a reading from me, you can check me out at willowsboom.com and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have Virgo rising and sun. This Leo new moon is happening in your 12th house. And there is always something that usually requires an ending when there's a new moon in the 12th house. It's like in order to grow and have a new chapter and evolve, you have to let something go and you have to shed this old way of doing things, this old way of being, an old relationship, an old pattern. And... I see that especially with this purification card. It's just like there's something in your life that needs to be purified. And with this peaceful warrior card, this one specifically talks about um, leaving behind self-sabotage, which is very classic for the 12th house. It's the house of self-undoing. So addiction or um, bad habits or ways that we can physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually undermine ourselves happen in the 12th house. And this card says milk thistle dispels damaging and destructive thoughts that induce an endless loop of self-sabotage. Don't waste your time trying to control what cannot be controlled. Like a peaceful warrior, set your boundaries firmly and fearlessly. And it will shake up the systems that hinder innovation and halts patterns and behaviors that stunt growth. Know that what you're not changing, you are choosing. So there's some cycle that's been going on. Maybe it's a mental cycle. Maybe it's an emotional cycle. But there's something that you've invested into again and again that is really sabotaging or hurting you in some capacity. And this energy is going to come shake it up. This Leo new moon ultimately is really about pursuing our desires and things that we really want despite what other people say or despite our fears, despite shame that we might experience as a result of what we want. And it's fully owning it, courageously going after it. And so if there's something in your life that you've wanted, that you've wanted to take action on, that you have been anxious about or that you have allowed yourself to get stuck in the cycle of rumination about, it's saying that it's time to step out of the rumination, let that cycle go and come into a phase of almost like you're owning a lot more of your power. You're planning and working on it and you're just moving forward anyway. Um, and I pulled or I rolled this south node on the dice. So it's definitely about some kind of almost karmic cycle. The 12th house is very karmic. So there's there might be something about this Leo energy where when you put yourself out there, when you do stuff that you want to do for you, that it might feel really scary for you. It might feel um, unhealthy or weird because the 12th house is not integrated. And again, it's karmic. So it brings up a lot of this weird baggage with it when we try to pursue that energy. And this is our chance to make peace with that, let that go and pursue what we want anyway. This is a time to focus on ourselves with this first house being rolled here and with the new moon trining Aries in the north node, um, the north node in Aries in the eighth house. It's like, I'm going to face all of my own fears and just release them. I'm going to have courage to continue to pursue what I want and take certain risks, regardless of the past, regardless of the triggers that could come up when I'm doing it, because I know it's going to be worth it in the end. I'm going to break three, break free and break past something. Um, and especially with this Capricorn, it's like it's something that you will ultimately benefit from long term. Like this is something that you are either going to pursue in terms of career or is something that it builds your foundation of your life, your goals, your objectives. And if you allow yourself to actually push past the triggers and push past the growth edge, you'll find that when you break through, you accomplish a great deal and you have a lot of integrity and self-respect and self-control that comes as a result of disciplining yourself um, in harder circumstances and harder emotional circumstances. And this Leo new moon is squaring Uranus in the ninth. So it's really helping shatter your existing beliefs, your existing visions, and shake them up and change them in a way that will help suit your growth, that will help you, again, expand in the ways that you need to expand without feeling like, oh, 
I can't do this because if I did, you know, when I did this as a kid, this happened to me. It's like, no, we're not getting stuck in that anymore. We're truly evolving past it. And this Venus retrograde is helping us understand that we need to prioritize this, that we can't just prioritize being liked or being comfortable. And we have to prioritize our heart more than anything else. You guys are also going through a period of a lot of stimulation. So you might be very busy trying to get organized, trying to become disciplined. You might be a little bit more anxious than usual or hyperactive. With Mercury, your planetary ruler conjunct Mars in Virgo in your first house. It's just going to bring you a lot of energy. It also helps you commit to the things that you're thinking about and actually act on them before you can get too in your head, um, which I think it can produce anxiety, but it can also produce the ability to act. So I think that's going to help you a lot, especially because Mars is trining Uranus in the 10th saying, make changes to your life goals, make changes to your directions, um, that direction that you're headed, your career, make the, make the necessary shifts. Um, did I say in the, the 10th, I meant the 9th. Okay, so that changes things a little bit. It's saying, um, so just ignore that last part where I said make changes to your life goals. It's more so to make changes around the way that you give meaning to things, the way that you interpret things, the way that you create beliefs about things. So um, if I take this action and I get this result, I'm not going to make it mean X, Y, and Z if it's not favorable to me. I'm going to look at it from the perspective that is going to create more freedom in my life, not thing, not create more beliefs that restrict me or close in on me. So um, I hope that's making sense. We also have Mars opposite Neptune in the 8th, and that's going to diminish, or in the 7th, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Um, I'm reading my notes, but I like wrote it all down correct incorrectly. And I'm like, that's, I am, a, I'm a Virgo rising. So I'm very aware that Neptune is in my seventh. Um, regardless, Mars in the first op opposite Neptune in the seventh can create some confusion around other people in our lives. So we might be wanting to take action. We might be feeling more courageous, but then other people come in and we're concerned about how it affects them. We're concerned about our place with them, our relationship with them, or we're just concerned about them in general and that can influence our decisions. So it's important to just trust your intuition, trust your gut, your instincts, your emotions, and not try to have everything completely planned out which sometimes again there's sometimes things there's things you can't control there are things you can't plan for and ultimately you really know what's best based off of your own heart and if you try to have every single little detail planned out you're going to be frustrated because of this neptune opposition to mars um and i can really see that with the page of cups you're entering into an energy of um, possibilities and creative opportunities, but more so intuitive messages. So your intuition telling you, go this way, go that way. This is what you need. This is what you want. And if your intuition tells you that, and then someone pushes back, you can still trust yourself. You can still trust that you have the right, the right knowledge about what you need. I also pulled the nine of pentacles. So you guys are entering into an era of more stability, more confidence, more uh, financial stability, specifically feeling more self-sufficient. So again, this is your period of time to rely on the self and to be independent. Mars is in your first house. Your planetary rule is in your first house. So what do you need to focus on you and what you want and what you need? It's not about other people right now. That's what the North Node in Aries is telling us. That's what Mars in your first house is telling you. It's about you. So this nine of pentacles is saying, you focus on you, you focus on getting your money and doing what you need to do to feel secure and then trust your intuition on how to deal with the relationships and people that might come up against certain decisions or might want to influence you in some way. I also pulled the ace of swords. So you guys are entering into a period of gaining more clarity, especially with Mercury here in your first house. Um, you might have lots of new ideas recently, especially with Venus retrograde. We can do a lot of reassessing. And with Mercury in your sign on top of that, you can have lots of new ideas about old things specifically. And I would encourage you to ask yourself lots of questions, ideate, really come up with answers to past problems, and then really implement them starting in September 3rd when Venus goes direct. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Virgo Rising. I hope this resonates. Please comment down below if it did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, check me out at willowswim.com. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.
All right, up next we have Libra rising and sun. For you guys, this Leo new moon is happening in your 11th house of friendships and community. And like I've been saying, especially because Venus is here with this new moon, this is a lot about reprioritizing um, what we value with this Venus retrograde and then living according to that, despite what other people think, despite how other people react. And this could come up in your friend group. This could come up in people that you're in relationship with, in your community, your belonging, um, especially if there is any kind of like traditional community or like since I pulled the Hierophant card, this has a lot to do with like um, a religious community, a spiritual community, an institution, something that has like a governing force or um, like a method to it. There's something along the lines of like people come together with this belief and then they hang out and blah, blah, blah. So there's something around um, that sense of belonging that needs to undergo a change. The way that you fit into or conformed to a friendship group, to an institution, to um, your community in some kind of respect, there there needs to be something that really gives here because of the square to Uranus in the eighth house. Something about this is bringing up quite a bit of survival instinct, um, fears from the past, power struggles, um, shadowy elements that can come into place, insecurities. That's coming up into your relationships right now. And I especially see that with the Seven of Wands. Um, this is a card that has to do with... Okay, sorry, that was unexpected. Um, interesting though, like what just happened to me energetically. Um, someone just came to the door, which was it was fine, but I felt this Seven of Wands energy of like, I need to protect myself. I need to preserve myself and maybe I have to fight. Maybe I have to compete. Maybe I have to challenge somebody or challenge the status quo or challenge the beliefs, challenge the norms, the expectations because I need to protect my own inner self. And I see this working out for you really well with the ending with the Ten of Pentacles. I see this leading to like whatever, whatever breaking from the norm that you're having to go through. Um, it's going to lead you into much more abundance and stability. And this person is surrounded by people they love. So you're going to have this feeling of like, I'm meeting with family. I'm meeting with like-minded souls being ex either accepted by that group or maybe um, there is a relationship that it, there's a rift in and then you find other people that you're accepted with. There's something where you're like, you're protecting your own energy and your own beliefs and your own way of being and it's suiting you well. It's either attracting the right relationships or some kind of financial stability, some kind of wealth. Like it's creating this feeling of having all of your needs met. Um, so it's like you, that is not that that ability to move into conflict, which is hard for Libra sometimes. It does not go wasted. It really gets you to what you want. And I feel like this is something that you were really meant to do with this initiation card. Like you were always meant to go through this period of having some kind of challenge. You're being initiated so that you know your own medicine, what you have to offer, what's unique for you with this offering card. There's something about your unique essence that you're meant to help the world with, that you're meant to just embody for just being around you to, to for other people to soak that up. And you can't do that if you are just conforming to a certain standard of society, the world, of a friend group. Um, it's like you really have to push back and define who you are, what you stand for, what you want, what you're moving towards. And it leads you to prosperity, whether that's right away or in the future, I don't know. But it leads you to prosperity and the right people surrounding you, which is really beautiful. And this makes so much sense because this new moon is trining the north node in your seventh house. So really you're coming into a phase of, of trying to attract the perfect relationships to meet you where you are at. The perfect relationships that will help you grow as a person that will be your, be your like somebody who completes you basically. Um, so I really feel like this is going to benefit you a lot long term. Um, I ultimately think that you are going to see how there are some ways that this moon and the four of pentacles you're going to see how there are some ways that there are 
that you have been like preserving yourself or like um, holding back, withholding from others or from making moves or being seen or really putting yourself out there. There's, there's something about your own psyche that has kept you, has tried to keep you safe in some capacity. And you're going to start to understand a little bit more, even if it's just intuitively, those hidden aspects of the self that have told you, oh, no, you don't want to do that. Like, oh, no, you don't want to say that because, you know, you don't really care that much when in reality you do or you wanted that thing or whatever. But it, there was a desire for self-preservation and security that kept you um, from fully pursuing or taking action on something. I think you're going to start to realize like how you may have actually had hidden parts of the self that has been a little bit focused on um, safety and preservation. And I think that's also coming from Mercury and Mars being together in Virgo in your 12th house. I think you're becoming a lot more like self-aware of any things that could undermine your personal power, any thoughts or actions that have undermined you in the past. And with Mars making an exact trying to Uranus in the eighth, I think it's going to help you release those things and help you not only shed light of awareness on them, but say, that's not for me anymore. And Mars is opposite Neptune in the sixth, so there can still be some confusion about how this affects your work life, your routine, your health, your daily balance, like the structure that you typically are um, a part of. Like that area might seem a little more confusing or you're not sure how it's going to pan out as you start to own your power a little bit more, but it's okay because as long as you trust your intuition, it will lead you to the right steps and the more practical parts of your life will fit, fit into place later. I also pulled this, um, this Neptune car or this, I rolled this Neptune dice and this cancer as well. So you guys are really like in your feels. I think that there's a lot here where you're just having to kind of trust your feelings very strongly trust your mama bear instincts as well as your compassion for yourself and others that it will tell you exactly how to navigate any difficult situations or um, it will show you what you really desire from a deeper soul level, like what you really, really need in life. I also pulled the fifth house. So some of you might be considering children or there might be something related to children, especially with cancer and the fifth house coming in. Um, and maybe that's also part of what you're realizing with Neptune here, some kind of existential questions around children or um, your relationship with your own inner child or childlike energy and innocence. Those things could come up as well as the energy of just creation itself and what you desire to like give to the world, transmit to the world, um, that those things might come to you in very strong intuitive hits, like divine guidance, like work on this next say this, do this, and it's going to kind of lead you onto the right path. So it feels like you're very much in touch with your intuition right now. You're very much in a creative flow right now. And you can trust that, especially with Mars and Mercury in the 12th, you can really trust that the hand of God is telling you go here and do this when it comes to the act of creative creation and expression. I also pulled the five of cups and the four of cups, which is interesting. It's kind of, um, I don't know, it felt like a different message or kind of random. The Five of Cups is regret, failure, disappointment, pessimism, and the Four of Cups is really where we are detached from something, we're really reevaluating something, and we're not sure if we want it or if we're into it. So there's something about this where I feel like you guys are moving into a phase of I'm no longer going to like be so bothered or worried about if I'll regret this um, or if I'll feel... Like you're, you're not getting stuck in your own negative thoughts. You know, it's like you're, you're deciding, yeah, things could turn out in this negative way or this pessimistic way. I could regret this. This could be a fail. I could be disappointed in the ending of this, but I'm deciding to not invest into those thoughts or feelings. I'm just deciding that actually, um, you know, I, let me reframe this and see how this could always benefit me, even if it doesn't end up the way I think it's going to end up or hope it's going to end up. So there's something about this where you guys are taking your power back by not allowing yourself to get caught in a story 
of why you shouldn't take action on something because of the potential pitfalls. It's like, no, I'm actually going to think about all the reasons why I should do something. And that's going to make the situation turn out well, which again, it will, because with this 10 of pentacles showing that you engaged in some conflict or you stood your ground and it ended in this most positive card in, in, in tarot, it shows that it does turn out well and that you can trust, um, in this whole process of, of self-empowerment and self-discovery that you're going through right now as an initiation. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra. I hope that resonates. If it does, please give me a thumbs up, comment down below. I love to read your comments. I love, love, love them. Um, don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends. And if you're interested in a reading for me, check me out at willowsboom.com. And I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, I'm next to Scorpio rising and sun. This Leo new moon is happening in your 10th house. And I'm looking at your cards and I'm like, what the F is going on? Um, first of all, having a new moon in your 10th house is a big deal because it is going to give you some kind of push or initiation into discovering more of your purpose. Maybe you have an opportunity unfold. There's something that clicks into place or clarity and understanding a conversation, something that helps you know what's next in your life, that helps you know what you're meant to do in your career or in your bigger life goals and objectives. And I can definitely say that with this purpose card, with the trust card, you guys are getting these messages from the divine support and random things happening to you that may feel also kind of um, turbulent, especially with other people in your life. There might be some things happening in your relationships that are turbulent, but somehow it's going to lead you to more freedom and expansion in your life overall and in your long-term pursuit of what you really want, um, even in your career as well. So just keep that in mind. And this Leo New Moon is really about doing things that go against the grain that we don't really care if other people don't agree because Black Moon Lilith is here. And yes, Venus is here, but Venus is retrograde. And she's like, I want to prioritize myself. I'm in the sign of Leo. The North Node is in Aries and this new moon is trining the North Node in Aries as well in the work sector for you in the sixth house. So there's something here. Where it's like, let's be independent. Let's do what we want. Let's not give a F what everyone else says. Um, and so this is your really, this is your time to really take up space and, and not care if other people don't agree with some of your decisions. And that's totally fine. Um, but there may be a need to make some relationship changes because of the square to Uranus in the seventh house. It's pretty much an exact square. So that means that there's going to be something either happening in the lives of those around you, or uh, maybe it's happening in your connection or the way that you see people. But there's something around your relationships that is a little bit chaotic or unstable or needs innovation. And with this death card, and the three of pentacles, I feel like there may be some way of, of you guys ending some kind of like work connection or work relationship. Um, the death card is about endings and change and transformation. So it doesn't have to mean that it ends per se, but that there's something that needs to undergo a change. With the three of pentacles, this is about teamwork, collaboration. And again, this is trining the north node in your sixth house and squaring Uranus and seventh. These are houses that have to do with collaboration, working together to achieve a, a common aim. And so there's something about these areas where you're meant to continue to evolve and you're going to have to let other things go in this specific field. So if you are partnering up with somebody on a project, it's like, okay, I don't really want to do that with you anymore. Um, if you were, uh, I don't know, if you were having a weird dynamic go on in your work relationships. It's like, let's change our, our dynamic together here so that we don't have the same responsibilities before that we can create a better structure. There's something that's like not going to work as it is, um, in your work relationships or personal relationships, people that you teamwork with, that you implement things with, that you rely on in your everyday life to get things done. Um, there may also be in this, I rolled the Pluto dice. Um, I rolled the dice and I got Pluto um, and I got cancer. So there might also be some kind of like emotional manipulation. Um, we got the seven of swords, which I feel like this card is specifically talking about betrayal, deception, getting away with something. Um, and there could be some of this. Uh, well, I'm going to offer a couple interpretations. So first of all, this could be something that 
in the relationship with this person, it was there was some kind of deception and it kind of broke down the relationship and now there's a change and there's an ending or whatever. Um, and the truth can come to light. Uranus tends to bring truth or shock or surprise. And for you, that's coming into your relationships and ultimately impacting your life direction and your career and kind of how your goals unfold. But it's going to ultimately be more positive because of the Venus there. Um, but it could feel initially unstable and it's telling you to trust that process. This, this card doesn't just have to do with betrayal, though. It has to do with also acting very strategically and making choices that make sense for you in this relationship and where you're headed. And I think that might be the case for most people. And I pulled the Empress card as a way to describe the Seven of Swords. And so the Empress is somebody who, again, is very trusting of the universe. She's very in tune with um, her own abundance and her own feminine energy of manifestation and receiving the things that she's drawing to her. Um, it also brings out the idea of beauty and um, and nature and just really feeling like you can lean into the abundance of nature and the cycles of life. So there's something here where I feel like it's trying to tell you guys that whatever changes are happening in your relationships, whether it was because of something that went horribly wrong or because of you're deciding to act more strategically and kind of get ahead of the, the game a little bit and reprioritize things in your dynamics with others but there's whatever ultimately happens there is helping you step into an empress energy where there's more flow there's something about that dynamic or that relationship or the way things were going about where maybe it was forced maybe it wasn't natural maybe there wasn't enough flow maybe it felt like there wasn't enough ease or abundance maybe it wasn't working there's something about this connection and with your goals how it wasn't fitting into that and it's almost like how can we make this prosperous how can we create more nurturing energy between both parties how can we create this ease and this receptivity and one of the ways to do that um, is by redefining the relationship, the roles, how you work together, and all of those things to create this sense of balance and prosperity and ease in, in the dynamic. Um, and so I think that that has to do with the Pluto nature as well. It's like, okay, let's, let's understand where there are underlying um, shadows that have crept into the relationship or power struggles or um, psychological issues that have undermined our success together uh, or my ultimate goal as a person, like maybe I'm trying to reach for something as a person and there's people in my life that just have that energy that brings up crisis and brings up drama. And it's like trying to um, reorganize those people in your life so they're not a priority as much or not a distraction to you as much and come into an energy of flow and trust with this cancer where you're really leaning into your emotions. And with this fourth house, oops, with this fourth house where you're feeling a lot more secure, a lot more stable, especially in the home environment, feeling more emotionally safe within yourself because of the way that the relationships have undergone a change. You guys also have Mercury and Mars in Virgo in your 11th house, which is definitely very stimulating in the area of friendships and connection and community and belonging, as well as long-term future goals. But this area is really a very action-oriented area right now where we're trying to get organized. You might have the potential to meet a lot of new people, network and connect with people. You might just be very social or have a lot of trips planned or something that is kind of calling away your energy into either future preparation or into the community at large. And with Mars in the 11th making an exact trine to Uranus in the 7th, this is saying again that whatever changes are happening to your relationships, it's almost like you're going to find better people or new people or the right people that kind of like fill it in and and, and um, take their place. There's something here where it's like if you have certain relationships ending, don't worry because other ones are going to be better for you that will step in or there's something around this where there's support from your community or your friends if there are changes in, in dynamics with others. You might not be totally clear on how your friends fit into the things that you are getting a lot of joy out of now, um, like your kids, for example, or your creative projects or things that you're working on within your home that you're excited about their stuff um, or your business, like something that you feel a lot of joy and excitement out of. You might not understand quite yet how your community, your friends can support you in that or how these two fit together in your life. Um, but that's not something to worry about yet. Just trust your intuition and you'll know 
how that will unfold in the future when the time is right. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. If that resonates, please don't forget to comment down below and let me know how. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, check me out at willswim.com and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have Sagittarius rising in sun. This Leo new moon is happening in your ninth house. And I feel like I got really, really positive cards for you guys indicating a period of growth and expansion, which is what ninth house energy is all about. This Leo new moon in particular is helping us expand even though there may be contradictions or outside influences that push against us that say no we can't or no we shouldn't or we have internalized shame or beliefs or societal expectations and we're overcoming that to truly go after what we want to, to do the things that inspire us regardless of the implications of that in society or from others and Venus retrograde is really helping us tune in and reprioritize so that we can align with what it is that we really, really value. And this this Leo new moon is making an exact square to Uranus in the sixth house. So there is something in your daily life, your daily responsibility, the grind, or even the way that you need to take care of your health that needs some kind of change. So um, this Leo new moon is going to help you do that. And it's almost like you're needing to bridge the gap between the mundane and the future and the vision of the future. And this new moon in particular is trining Aries in the North Node, which to me is symbolizing the ability to move into a space of greater joy and fulfillment. And so there might be stuff around the mundane life that feels, I don't know why the word treacherous came up, um, or that might just feel like you're trudging through snow like oh this isn't the blah, blah blah I have to get up at this time and I have I'm so tired and I have to cook and maybe there's just something about your work routine or your responsibilities that has been feeling heavy and this is saying that you're coming into a place of surpassing that somehow or finding more joy finding that you're able to change the way that you go after your work um, to align more with an optimistic vision something that drives you to feel more hopeful and supported by the universe something that feels more expansive and not something that is just kind of like what do i have to do today um and so I really feel like you guys are stepping into very strong version of yourself that is spiritually guided, that is intuitive, that is in a flow state rather than feeling very, I was going to say methodical, but there are ways in which we're very methodical right now with Mercury and Mars and Virgo in your 10th house. Your career is actually quite methodical and like you're refining this area of your life, your your life goals and your career. Um, so if you have a really big goal that you're working on right now, or again, just normal career stuff, it's like you're refining that, you're becoming more skilled in that, you are understanding how to get on top of it and excel and become efficient in that. But there's something about the day-to-day -day humdrum that is getting more of a facelift that feels more invigorating, that feels more stimulating, exciting, expansive. And so while the other areas of, you know, your goal pursuits are refined and are more regimented in some ways because of your um, ability to really have like control over how you are excelling in those areas of your life, while that's happening, there's also this ability to change and adapt and allow things to flow and um, be much more loose and um more so like moving with your own energy and intuition in the details of your everyday life. So I hope that makes sense. It's almost like you're planning for your future. You're having this structure. You're having this like expectation of, of yourself. But then when it comes to how you execute that in your everyday life, how you bring that to life or how you maintain your life and maintain your resources, it's almost like that area seems to be coming into more of a flow. And again, it's helping you feel much more joy and optimism because not only are you growing, but you're not feeling like really bogged down by structure even though structure is there um it's there for your long-term self but it doesn't suffocate you 
when you wake up in the morning and feeling like you don't have any other choice but to do X, Y, and Z. I'm sensing that there's going to be more spaciousness in your life somehow. Um, and I don't know what that means for you exactly, but I feel like you're still working very hard towards your long-term goals, especially with the seven of pentacles. Um, but it almost feels like you're doing it from a place of more inspiration. Um, maybe you're having some kind of creative visions coming to you. Maybe you're feeling like you have um, new relationships or people into your life that are emotionally like exciting you about what's to come. But there's something in your life where your cup is full, your cup is overflowing. And because of that, you're able to really dedicate more towards these long-term projects, plan long-term, um, invest yourself, persevere in a way that feels more emotionally satisfying than maybe before uh, it felt. You're also coming into a period where you are learning how to develop the necessary skills to manifest and to create more finances for yourself. And so this could look like blending the masculine and the feminine, which is what this reading is sounding like. Blending the masculine and feminine is you having that structure and routine, but also giving way for inspiration, creativity, and flow, which can only come through intuition and feelings and, and the moment, and it can't be expected or commanded. And so you guys are learning how to hone that wild resource into an area of your life with this page of pentacles, and you're becoming really skilled at this and knowing what you need to do with your feminine energy, with this high priestess card, your divine feminine, your intuition, your subconscious mind, your sacred knowledge, you're using this really wise, deeper, internal, like shielded part of the self um, to cultivate more of what you're wanting in life, which is super, super beautiful. Um, and it just feels like you're coming into a state of balance a lot more in your life. Um, you also have Mercury and Mars and Virgo on the 10th, which I already discussed is kind of you creating that long-term plan. The only thing though is that Mars is also opposing Neptune in the 4th. So this plan might not always correlate to understanding what to do within the home. So it's like, okay, I want to take action in my career, but then I don't know how this is going to work for like where I live or my financial life or my emotional security or how this is going to fit with my family. Like there's still some unanswered questions there and that's okay. And this is really saying that you're protected and that you can keep trusting your intuition in regards to those everyday decisions and how those things will come into balance will become clear to you later. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Sagittarius. If that resonates, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, don't forget to check me out at willowswim.com and have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have Capricorn rising and sun. This Leo new moon is happening in your eighth house. And I do think it's going to, I mean, based off of some of the cards I pulled and the meaning of the eighth house, usually being a malefic or challenging house. I do think this could bring up some emotions within you, um, especially around your relationships with women or relationships in general, because this is a new moon conjunct Venus in Black Moon Lilith. It can really bring out how people have maybe made you feel like you don't belong or like you should be ashamed or that you're different or there's something off with who you are, what you want, or maybe there's just that's that feeling of shame that you've had and in, in brought into your aesthetic or appearance or um, connections or your money and what you've accepted from people and your sense of worthiness all those things can just come up in general it doesn't just have to be with women and so you might start to really feel those things and notice how those have affected you in the past and how you don't want to have them affect you in the future and this is in time of empowerment. This Leo New Moon is really about shoving those things to the side and saying, I'm going to courageously move forward and I'm going to move towards what I desire and I'm not going to think about how I look or if this is dumb or if I get rejected. I'm really going to just embrace myself where I'm at right now and say, hell yeah, I got this. And that's why this new moon is making a square to Uranus in the fifth. It's like, let's embrace all of our unique gifts. The fifth house in... I believe it's traditional astrology is the house of the soul. And so there's something here where your natural gifts come to life. Your natural essence gets played out. It's the house that is ruled by the sun. It's a house related to Leo. So there's something here where it's like you haven't fully been shining your light, expressing yourself 
confident in yourself because of everything that I just talked about. And it's time to make a change to that with the square to Uranus. It's saying, let's radically shake up this energy, shake up these old emotions, let that go and focus more on the potential of what things could be like if we really did allow ourselves to fully step up in any way that we want, whether this is expressing ourselves differently or um, through our words or through our aesthetic or through our creations or through our relationships or something about our expression that needs less hindrance of fear or rejection or any of those things, um, especially related to our past and how those things were maybe received as we were kids, but it doesn't have to be. It's just generally we have a lot of kind of insecurities and issues around just unadulterated performance and expression and, and ex exhibition in a way of like, look at me, look at who I am. Um, and I feel like you guys are stepping into a greater sense of self-worth and emotional security and physical security. And this is making a beautiful trine to Aries in your fourth house, Aries North Node in your fourth house. So you're going to come into a place where you find yourself a home whether that is like a mental or emotional home within yourself and you feel very safe and secure or whether that is a physical place that you can call home or relationships there's something where i think you're going to as you accept yourself as who you are and shine your light for who you are i think you'll find that you're going to to settle into a specific place that feels really safe and comforting um, and then that might be really nice if some of you guys are trying to move or if you're having issues within your home or family, it's like something about this is going to improve, is going to grow, is going to evolve because of your relationship improving and evolving with yourself. Um, I also feel like another message is with an, I roll these dice, these astrology dice, and I got the North Node, the second house in Taurus, and all of this is very much related to finances and self-worth. So the more that you express yourself and feel confident in who you are and are not as inhibited or fearful, especially when it comes to like social aspects and social dynamics, social fears and anxieties, the more that you are able to truly like let that all go, you'll start to see that you create more financial abundance for yourself. Those things will really feel hand in hand for you. Um, so you guys also have Mercury and Mars and Virgo in the ninth house. So this is a period really where traveling is enhanced. Mercury and Mars gives us tons of energy and it also helps us become more disciplined and focused. So it helps you become efficient and organized and resourceful and really know how to manage those resources. And this could mean that you um, are taking on more in your life because you are also embodying those traits. So maybe if you're traveling more, you have an itinerary and you kind of know what you're going to follow. Or maybe you decide to, to take on a new subject or go back to school. There's something in that where you are very efficient right now and can take on that extra responsibility and manage it really well and take away a lot of meaning um, from those experiences and, and that will help inform the rest of your life. Mars is also trining Uranus in the fifth house. So this is going to help inspire your self-expression. You're going to learn more about yourself. You're going to learn more about what you like, what you don't like, what inspires you creatively. And that is part of what um, will help unleash your own essence even more because you're almost like, it's like when we go out into the world and we see ourselves in new places and in different situations with different people, interacting with different types of environments, we become even more aware of our full self because we learn more about ourselves in that process. So all that's happening, but Mars is also opposite Neptune in the third. So there could be kind of like more strategic things that you're worried about or things that are more practical or more immediate that need your attention or that you haven't fully resolved. There could be conversations in your, that you need to have that are um, confusing. There could be just thoughts of like, I don't really know what I'm doing or where I'm going. Like it could be just generally confused about like your more immediate reality and like kind of what you think or where you're going. Um, and this is really telling you to trust your intuition and not try to have everything all planned out. Even though Mars and Virgo in the ninth is very good with creating a plan for the vision, Neptune can challenge that and make you more confused and feel unsettled and uncertain. And that's when you have to trust your gut that you are are leaning in the right direction and you know where you're going. So we can try to plan, but ultimately 
there's only so much we can do with that and there's only so much we can control. And so just trust that you actually know from a deeper intuitive level the right path for you. So I think that you're coming into a phase with this blessing card of becoming more financially blessed. And I think, again, it's really as a result of the way that you're showing up with your relationship with yourself and your own self-worth. I also pull that next to the magician card. So again, you're going to you're gonna be able to start seeing how you can manifest the money that you're looking for. And it doesn't have to just be provided for you or plopped into your lap or come in wrapped up in a tight little bow. You are going after it because you feel like you're capable and you're taking initiative in this instance. Um, I also pulled some other cards for you guys. I got the three of cups five of cups and three of swords. So I feel like there are some, some things around, this is kind of what I was saying before around relationships that have disappointed you or hurt you in the past or people or women or something around like the people around you have disappointed you in the past. And it's like, you're really deciding to let that go with this page of wands um, and to brave almost like a new way of doing things, a new way of looking at things. <laughs> My mic is in the way. Um, and to, you're deciding to feel inspired and creative and express yourself, like I said, regardless of what has happened to you. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Capricorn. If that resonates, please let me know by commenting down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, check me out at willsboom.com and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have Aquarius rising and sun. This Leo new moon is happening in your seventh house of relationships. And this is an interesting one because it already has a lot to do with relationships because this new moon is conjunct Venus, which is, of course, the planet of relationships. It's also conjunct Black Moon Lilith. And Black Moon Lilith has a lot to do with the shame that we hold in relationship in relationships with people because of our differences, because of our dark desires or things that we really um do that are different that society disagrees with and we can feel kind of like the again the being an outsider or the castigation of that from um, society and from even personal relationships so this new moon is really about triumphing over that so like what do i really want and if there are pressures or people or anything else that i'm considering that is getting in the way of what i really want in my connection and relationship with other people, then I need to overlook that. I need to be courageous and move past that. So for example, if you want to have an unconventional relationship with somebody in your life, but you're afraid that society will judge you, it's like, no, F that. I'm going to do this anyway. Um, if there is any kind of contract, agreement, or commitment working with somebody or Again, any intimate relationship with somebody, there's a new start happening here where you're going to be able to overcome um, any of those fears that could have kept you from just pursuing the relationship in the way that feels most authentic in alignment with you in particular. And this might also shake up your home life because this new moon is making an exact square to Uranus in your fourth house. So there could be some element of your relationships affecting your home life and needing and needing for you to make some kind of changes here. So um, the way that you interact with your family, uh, maybe you need to break free from their expectations or conventions. Maybe there is... Um, changes quite literally in the foundations of your home that you need to to do um, to shake up that will affect your relationships or just your place of living or your emotional nature there's something here that needs to be shaken loose and free and this was always something that was meant to happen with this destiny card so if you're having some kind of like big changes in the home or the family know that this was again some part of your destiny that you were meant to go through this cycle to help understand yourself a lot better to help be more authentic and align with yourself and with this new moon also trining the north node in Aries in the third house there is some kind of way whatever situation is happening is also really helping you um align with a more independent way of living your life and thinking so if you have um let certain relationships or desire to belong kind of get in the way of your perception of things or, you know, who you talk to or what you go out and do, or if it's influenced you on an internal level, 
it's almost like we're trying to make you more just insulated, um, more of like a closed system. So you're not taking in the input and advice from everybody else, but you're truly able to distinguish what is my perception? What is what I was my truth? What do I want to communicate? Um, what do I want to do? Who do I want to interact with and not have it muddled or confused by the outside perspectives of other people? Um, so that's going to be ultimately what this is leading you to do because of this north node moving through your third house in the sign of Aries. How do I become a more independent thinker? How do I go after things that I really desire without thinking much about it um, and getting in my own way? And part of your relationships could be what gets in the way for you sometimes. And if that's the case, this is your chance to check in with you and ask yourself, you know, does somebody else's comments or expectations make me doubt myself or affect me on a way in a way that it shouldn't? And how do I overcome that? How do I create more authenticity and security within myself that I don't need to rely on any outside perspectives? So that's a really important key here. So I pulled this moon card, which has to do with illusion and fear and things that are hidden from view. Um, and so there's something in the current situation that I feel like you have maybe um, had anxiety about fully like showing yourself and all of your essences. Um, maybe you uh, had some kind of subconscious desire to belong or to not rock the boat, even though, um, you know, Aquarius is usually quite rebellious there are still always aspects of our, ourselves as people where we maybe don't want to like say the wrong thing. There's something here specifically around speaking. Um, and I see that also because I pulled or I rolled the Gemini Mercury dice. So there's something around your mindset or the way that you're speaking or articulating that you have a perspective that might be against your no the norm or against your family. There's something here that's like you're not, it's not something that's really like widely accepted or known or from your origins or your roots. So there's something here where you have a voice to share, a perspective, a desire, something that needs expression but may have been kind of hidden because of certain fears and anxieties. But you're moving into a period with this empress, which is all about really trusting in your own intuition and feeling very abundant, feeling very supported, um, and then in this Ace of Wands, which is all about growth and potential and opportunities, I feel like you're moving into a period of expansion and no longer worrying so much around, you know, am I not like, am I afraid to use my voice in some way? Is this not the right message? Is this too different? Is this da da da? What are people going to think? It's like you're no longer considering that at all and you're moving into a phase of, this makes me feel abundant. This makes me feel in flow. This makes me feel creative. This makes me feel like I'm growing. And so you're like, okay, I'm going to say it or I'm going to do it. Or I'm going to express it. And with this eighth house, you're really releasing any of those fears um, and combating them head on. Any insecurities that you might have, especially around being not enough or rejected. It's like you're really facing those and being like, I'm going to speak I'm going to speak this out there anyway. And this destiny card is like saying, again, this was always meant to happen. This is helping you find more of your purpose and more of your destiny and more of your fate by using your voice in the way that you're meant to be using it. Mercury and Mars are also together in the eighth house. So again, this is you really combating those fears head on and not letting them get to you any longer. Mars is also trining Uranus in the fourth. So this again might kind of create changes within your home dynamic, but it's eventually going to be very positive for you. Mars is also opposite Neptune in the second. So there could be ways in which you want to stay in your comfort zone or you want to stay in the known or you want to or you're afraid of like having instability or not having enough money or something of that nature where, where you're a little bit more fearful of taking risks and you're not sure how it's going to work out in a very practical sense. And this is saying to just trust your intuition and not try to have all the answers for how that's going to work out and just trust that it's going to unfold properly over time. The last card I have is a seven of pentacles, which is talking about looking at things long term, persevering and investing in it. So if there's something that you are expressing out into the world or um, 
yeah, if there's something happening within your relationships that were a change within your home, whatever, all the things I mentioned, whatever is happening, it's telling you to think about it from the perspective of 10 years, five years, and that whatever changes happen now or whatever things you start now are things that really do have a lot of legs. Like Venus is here. So this is a lot about relationships and artistry and creativity. Um, and so if there's something that you are initiating now, even though it is, it is Venus retrograde, so it's maybe not the best time to start something. Um, but if you're kind of like putting it out and initiating it now or investing in it, into it really deeply, this is saying that there is like a, a potential for really long-term success and that you don't have to worry about it being very fleeting. If you truly dedicate yourself to it and you don't give up, uh, you will see that results kind of like slowly come in for you. But you have to actually courageously put yourself out there um, to be seen in some way. And if you don't do that, then of course you'll never get any results. So it's like you you have to say the thing, voice the thing, ask the question, have the conversation, put out the body of work, um, approach the relationship to make the change, change the family, like whatever that thing is, you need to actually initiate it. And then you will get the results and just keep working at whatever that thing is, whatever that is you're trying to create stability within or create abundance within or, or, or persevere through. So I hope this is making sense. This is a general reading, so it is a little bit vague, but um, that's what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius. If this resonates, I would love to hear down below how this resonates with your life. Any comments are really appreciated. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, check me out at willisdom.com and have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have Pisces rising and sun. For you guys, this Leo new moon is happening in your sixth house of work, health, daily routine. It is conjunct Venus and black moon Lilith. So like I've been saying to all the signs as well as in the overview, this is a time where we are reprioritizing things that we are learning how to value things differently, basically, like does, using discernment. Does this thing still matter to me in the same way? Do I need to put less energy here, more energy here? For you, this is really coming in around how is my health? How is my everyday routine? Um, how is the structure of the way that I um, spend my time, basically, and take care of my responsibilities or take care of other people? And um, it's really kind of reassessing that flow and asking if that's still working for you. That's what Venus retrograding here is helping you do. And then on top of that, it's next to this new moon, which is giving you more of a new beginning here. So if something wasn't working and you started to reprioritize and it's like, okay, let's make this change. Let's do this thing and, and have this new path kind of unfold for us forward. Black Moon Lilith can represent a little bit of challenge where there is the perspective of the society that we live in or people that we live with that maybe disagree with the way that we handle our flow or they have a different way of doing things. And we sometimes can internalize that as shame of I'm different, I'm not accepted, and then I don't want to do it because of that. And so this is really combating that and courageously embracing the way that you want to move through life, especially when it comes to handling your everyday life and your routine and your health. And so if there's somebody who doesn't agree with it, who cares? You know, this is all about you. And this new moon is also squaring Uranus in your third house. So it's really a time of speaking your mind and your authentic truth. You might really need to shake up the way that you discuss things with people. Um, you might really need to also change your own perspectives of how you view things instead of letting people kind of influence you or instead of letting your daily life get super, super busy and chaotic that you're not actually li living in alignment with how you want to reprioritize and value your life. So it's really about managing your mind, managing your time, managing your energy, managing your interactions with others in a way that, um, you know, like doing the necessary changes and managing all that in a way so that it actually aligns with what you are intending. So it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm going to make some changes to the way I view this. I'm going to make some changes to the way that I respond to incoming stimulus so that I don't get thrown off track and I can actually, again, live in alignment with my desired structure, my desired reality. I'm not going to let others decide for me. I'm not going to let other people influence me. I'm not going to let these weird you know, I'm going to have these conversations and tell people how I truly feel. And this could also happen in your workplace as well, because this is a sixth house. So you might need to 
to kind of stand your ground a little bit in the workplace. You might need to um, own more of your power, say no, have certain conversations with people where you do things differently. And, and it's really about owning that and making the changes that you need to make um, within the workplace that suit you best and speaking that very, very clearly so that everyone understands and is on the same page as you. And this is trining your north node in Aries, this new moon, in the second house. So this is really creating much more self-confidence, stability, the potential for financial growth, feeling just much more at ease. So ultimately making these little changes or adjustments, having these conversations, all those things are going to lead you to feeling a lot more safe in your life, actually. You guys have Mercury and Mars and Virgo in the seventh house. So there could be a need again to have some kind of conversation. Um, there may be some boundaries that you need to lay down. Um, yeah. Okay. I kind of, I kind of want to go to the cards. Okay. I'll just going to continue with that. So this is a lot of energy in relationships. So you might need to set boundaries with other people and be like, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. This could be a really good time for collaboration as well, especially with a new moon in the sixth house, but you might need to really clearly define how things are going to be. So it's like, okay, we're collaborating on this. We're working together on this. We're living together, whatever this is that you're a unit with, but we have to delegate who gets what chores or who's working on what tasks or how we're going to operate as a couple or whatever this is. And Mercury and Mars can instigate a little bit of fighting, but it can also, especially in Virgo, help you really create the right structure and plan and resources. And because also Mercury is making this trying to Jupiter and Uranus, I think it's going to give you the positive elements of how to create a solution rather than just cause trouble. Mars in the seventh is trining Uranus in the third, which is again, imploring you to speak your mind, really tell people how you feel, communicate very clearly, ask for your needs and, um, really have like the proper boundaries so that things don't become too stimulating within the relationship as well, where there's not like enough time apart or, you know, like where your partner distracts you. It's like making sure that there are making sure that the flow of energy within wherever you are in in the project or in the relationship or in the house where you're kind of having this unit, making sure that the flow of energy makes sense and isn't distracting or taking away from the other person. Um, and this I think is really going to help you by talking with people or having the right mindset around how to navigate changes with people or actions um, with people. Mars is also opposite Neptune in the first though. So there could be some confusion around like, okay, but I want to do this with people. I want to, you know, pursue this project or live with them or create this harmony and work together. But then with Neptune the first, you also really need your time alone and you really need to process things and have your own bubble. And so you might need to have this balance here and it might not come so easily. You might be confused about how you can actually create that. Just really listen to your intuition, really listen to your emotions. Like what are you being guided to do in each given moment? Do you need to take a step back, honor that, um, in general. So if you need space, if you really need your own energy and your own creativity, maybe that's not the time to collaborate. And then other times it will be. So it's, it's really, you need to balance both of these by listening to your own heart. It's interesting because I pulled some pretty intense cards for you. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first card that I pulled is the King of Wands, which is you really being the visionary, the leader, the entrepreneur. So you kind of stepping up in this area of your career, um, specifically in your job where you're taking leadership. If you're collaborating with someone or if you have a job with somebody or this is in your everyday life, you're taking more leadership and ownership over it. You're delegating things. You're understanding like what time is needed for what and how to go about this, what changes again you need to make or how you need to communicate to make that happen. So that's really positive. But then we have the tower and the hanged man. And these cards are really about the way that you've done things not working anymore. So you can't just be a leader um, in the same way that you've been in the past. So maybe you've been the only one responsible for something, for example. And now with this tower and the hangman, you have to let other people also be responsible for it. Um, maybe with these cards, it's like, it's really kind of rocking the foundation. The tower has really sudden change or awakenings, revelations, while the hanged man is trying to get you to see from a new perspective and surrender some form of control. So it's, it's interesting here. Maybe you're who you're ever you're working with has a little bit more control in this instance, but there's something here where you don't have like, you're not in your complete own energy and having full domain. You have other people infiltrating it 
and maybe they're like in your space or they're taking your time or they you need to honor their perspectives as well within the workplace whatever it is it's like there's more heads to combine here and because of that um it's like there's just it's you can't go about things the same um and so with this change needing to pause and surrender it's really telling you um to go with the flow a little bit in the way that like you should be in a moment of adapting and realizing that whatever is happening in your current environment is um not going to be the same as it was before you can't operate the same way and they can't operate the same way it's like you're going to have to change and go with the flow a little bit better and with the page of cups ending this it's really saying to trust your intuition your curiosity your creativity to really lead you to um the potentials that can show you like what else is possible so it's like okay maybe i can't have my routine like this but maybe I can have it like this and and you start to kind of rework things because your life is different now and you can't just have things the same as they were. So I hope that's making sense. Um, I also pulled or rolled the first house, the south node and Capricorn. So it's really like you're having to give up some semblance of control to some extent or the structure that you had in your life before and reevaluate this in a new way. I also pulled the psychic healing card, which talks about the liminal space and being in transition. And it's really trying to say that like, you're maybe not very clear about some things right now. Maybe it's about relationships in your life or about how things are going to settle into your routine. It could be many areas, but it's almost like you're not totally clear because you're in a moment of transition where you're maybe embodying um, a new work environment, a new relationship, a new home environment. There's something in your life that's a little bit in flux and it's like you can't just do the same things that you did before in the same way and this is saying to really um use your intuition again to move through move through the darkness move through the confusion that can come from transitions in general and it's talking about being between one life phase and the next and you using your psychic powers to pass through through the realm of shadows, remembering that you're not lost and that the greatest clarity comes after the darkest hours. So you're going to have a lot more clarity soon. Um, and this new moon, I think, is the beginning of all of that. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. If that resonates, please comment down below. I love to read your comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, check me out at willsboom.com. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.